This weekend, Mom at the Movies, as we approach the 50th anniversary of Robert F. Kennedy's assassination, a new Netflix documentary reveals never-before-seen footage from RFK's historic presidential run, which ended tragically on June 6, 1968. I spoke with the award-winning filmmaker Don Porter, a Georgetown Law graduate, about the making of her new doc and what D.C. audiences can take away from it. What I think is quite clear is there are divisions and violence and a disenchantment with our society. We can start to work together. We are a great country and a compassionate country. He kept saying to myself, what is happening in America? I like to think of you as a documentarian of social justice because of all of the great work that you've done, especially with Gideon's Army, and now you're back with Bobby Kennedy for president. I really feel lucky to be able to explore these issues. It's, it's funny, when you're a documentarian, something has to seize your imagination. And in this political time, uh, Bobby Kennedy has been that story for me. Tell me about this film, because people feel like they know the Kennedys. But you were able to uncover never-before-seen footage and talk to people who said some new things. That's right. Um, we spent uh, over a year combing through archive footage. I used to work for ABC News. And I uh, had a friend in the tape library, and he said, um, told me that there was this archive, this film archive shot on 35 millimeter. And I remember just being fascinated by that and thinking, I wonder what the news networks were filming then. And it turned out they were following Bobby Kennedy through his historic campaign in 1968. Um, and then we reached out to other independent filmmakers from the 1960s and found never before seen footage from their outtakes, um, kind of like a filmmaker's home movies. So it was really a joy to go through all of that footage. What are, are some of the most fascinating, since you mentioned that word, yeah. images you saw when you first discovered this existed? Um, I think uh, the footage of Marion Wright Edelman, a young Marion Wright Edelman testifying before Congress, she has always been a personal hero of mine. Um, but to see her, Bobby Kennedy invited her to testify about poverty in Mississippi. African Americans were literally starving in the 1960s, and she was down there as part of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. She went to Washington as a 20-something, she testifies before Congress, and then she says to Bobby Kennedy, why don't you come to Mississippi and see for yourself? And she takes him on a historic tour that not only brought attention to what was happening, but then he later brought food to people. We face a major, major crisis in the Mississippi Delta. I asked him to go and see. Nobody was going to believe people were starving in America. It was clearly he'd gone through a transformation. You also featured Dolores Huerta in this film, and Bobby Kennedy lent his powerful voice uh, and his face to the farm workers movement at a time when no one of his stature and of his socioeconomic background was going to California and speaking up for the workers' rights. That is absolutely right. You know, Dolores Huerta spoke to us um, uh, several times, and one of the things that she noted was similar to the, the attention that he brought to the South with Marion Wright, he also brought that attention to California with the farm workers. Um, and Dolores Huerta, who is not an easily impressed woman and is a fierce woman, um, really spoke about how much hope that she, he gave to the community. Um, he not only brought press and gave speeches, but he actually marched on the picket lines for justice for the farm workers. So that was another bit of footage, seeing a young, energetic Dolores Huerta, and she's out there with him on the picket lines, and then she's with him on the last day of his life in that fateful day in California uh, when his life ended and his campaign ended. Mm, you also speak to a Washington lawmaker and an icon in the civil rights movement, Representative John Lewis. What did he share that we maybe haven't heard before? 
You know, um, John Lewis is, uh, we are all indebted for his service. And I think one of the things that I didn't know was that he had volunteered for Bobby Kennedy's campaign. So when you think about John Lewis was uh, already at a young age, a civil rights hero, was already marching in Selma and um, uh, working on behalf of African Americans and civil rights. Um, but John Lewis was the person who organized that the campaign in Indianapolis. So that where uh, Dr. King was, was murdered. So John Lewis was the person who said to Bobby Kennedy, you need to go address that crowd. Other Kennedy campaign staff said, it's too dangerous, there will be rioting, it's not safe for you. And John yeah, Lewis right. said, you must go and address the people. And Kennedy goes and he delivers one of his most famous speeches where he quotes um, a poet, but he also talks for the very first time about his brother JFK's death. Um, and he, that is one of the only cities that did not burn that night, that did not riot. You mentioned hope. I'm thinking about the next presidential election in a town like We're Washington, D.C. <laughs> We're all thinking about that. But in a town like Washington, D.C., where you have so many people who do political work, what do you want our Great Day viewers to walk away from this knowing or feeling? You know, I think um, I lived in Washington for, for 10 years, and there's no place like Washington, D.C. Um, this town is intimately connected with politics, but we also know what good government is. And I think what Bobby Kennedy showed was how you can put government, you can put people ahead of your own personal priorities. You can actually do good service, and you can do good work.